Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the Think Revert channel. This channel is all about the religion of Islam from a revert's perspective. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the simple topic of going to the mosque. The reason I decided to make this video, despite the fact that it's actually just a really simple, straightforward video, is simply because there may be some people out there who convert to the religion of Islam and they might not actually know any Muslim people and they also may not have any experience of going to the mosque um, just like myself when I first went. My first experience when I actually went to the mosque was the time when I decided that I'm going to go and take my shahada. I'm probably going to explain this story in more depth at a later time uh, in, a, in a separate video but basically I went with a friend who had also converted to Islam and what I can tell you is for myself um, it was a daunting experience. I had absolutely no idea what to expect. If any of you watching have actually grown up as Muslims, you may not necessarily appreciate um, the fact that people from a Western background may have absolutely no idea what to expect when going to the masjid. And we have no idea what goes on inside the masjid as well. So just to reiterate, this video is going to be very straightforward. All I'm going to be doing is just explaining to you what is the mosque and to give you some sort of idea what to expect when going to your local mosque. So from now on in the video, I'm going to be referring to the mosque as the masjid because masjid is the Arabic word to describe this place of worship and mosque is the English word. So I personally prefer just to call it a masjid. So first of all, let's discuss what is a masjid. So the masjid is essentially the place of worship for the Muslim people to pray in congregation. Now, as you should know from the previous video regarding the prayer, that Muslim people pray five times a day. And in most of the mosques that I've ever come across, they also pray five times a day in congregation. So what you might find is that at the local masjid, there's not necessarily just the prayers that are happening in congregation. Sometimes there's lectures, sometimes there's community events, there may be weddings going on. There's a number of different things that can happen at this place of worship. However, primarily the purpose of it is for the Muslims to get together and pray in congregation. Now, praying in congregation is something that you should do as the reward for praying in congregation is much higher. I would mention if you're a female, if you do pray at home, then there is equal or greater reward for you to stay at home and pray. Whereas for men, you will have a higher reward if you go and pray in congregation. There may be more rulings around this um, and more hadith to explain it, but I just wanna keep this a general straightforward video for now. And it's just something that you should be aware of. So moving on, I want to mention that in general, um, most of the masjids that I've ever been to are divided into a men's section and a women's section. Now, not every masjid that I've been to actually has a women's section simply because, as I mentioned before, you know, the women can pray at home and they will get the same, if not greater, reward for praying at home. So if you are female, um, then it may be worth looking online to see if the local mosque to you actually has a section dedicated for the sisters, um, or perhaps you could call ahead and just ask the question as that might make it easier for you. Now, Alhamdulillah, the local masjid to me actually allowed me to go in and take some footage. So that's what I wanted to take you through today, which is just a simple experience of going to this building and what you might expect when you go inside. So as I mentioned, there is a generally a section for the men to pray and a section for the women to pray. And I'll show you examples of that in the footage that we're gonna watch now. So this is the outside of the masjid. It actually used to be an old abandoned church and then they converted it into a place of worship for the Muslim people. Um, so this is how it looks when you're outside of the mosque. Now you can see that this uh, section here is for the males to pray. And this building over here is also sometimes open for the sisters to go and pray in there. Interestingly, this building actually no longer exists because they've taken it down and they're building a new masjid uh, to replace this one because this one is not big enough and doesn't really fit the community size. Um, anymore. So Alhamdulillah, they've managed to raise enough money to build a new masjid. So this footage is actually quite unique in the fact that this building won't be here anymore. So we're now going to go into the male section. Please bear in mind that this is just a general mosque. Not every mosque is going to look or be the same. But from my own personal experience, you'll generally find that the areas that this masjid is divided into are typical areas that most masjids will be divided into. Uh, obviously, it may be a different layout, but you're generally going to find these type of facilities. So when you go into the entrance, what I would expect to find if I was going to a brand new mosque for the first time is I would expect to find a place to take my shoes off and put my shoes somewhere safely. And what I would advise you is in general, 
uh, you don't really want to walk on any carpeted areas with your shoes on. Sometimes when you go into the masjid, they'll have a carpet area immediately. And if that's the case, then I would take my shoes off there. And you'll be looking for a place to either put your shoes on the floor or there'll be some dedicated racks for you to put your shoes on. So I wouldn't really advise to walk any further into the building with your shoes on. I would take your shoes off here and put your shoes on the racks. If it's a marble floor, sometimes the, the entrance area will just be a full marble floor and maybe you can take your shoes off and put them on the rack. Um, but the whole idea is that you don't want to take any dirt or anything impure into the masjid. So you want to take your shoes off at this area. So just be conscious of that. As you can see in this building, they have some leaflets, they have some boxes for different types of charity. And they also have some community events that are going on that they've got leaflets for. I would also generally expect to find that the timetables for the prayers at the masjid will also be printed out and left somewhere around this area for people to either take when they go in or more appropriately take when they leave. So if you're planning to go back regularly, this might be useful for you. So once we've taken our shoes off and we have put them on the shelf, we then go through these double doors and we find what is the main prayer hall. Now, what I would be thinking when I first went into the masjid, if I was already a Muslim and I wasn't looking to take my shahada, is I would be looking for the direction in which we are going to be praying. Now, if you're coming here for the first time and you're looking to take your shahada, even though you might feel awkward, you're going to find that, God willing, everyone in the masjid that you come across or you speak to is going to be very friendly, very open, very welcoming. Um, they might be surprised that you're coming to the mosque because maybe in that community that they're in, maybe it's quite rare that someone comes to actually take their shahada. However, I would just go and look for anyone and just tell them, listen, I want to become a Muslim. Please, can you direct me to someone who can help me? But if you have already taken your shahada and you just come into the mosque to pray for the first time, what I would do when I went into the masjid is I would be looking for the direction to pray in. There's also some dua that you can make when you enter the masjid. But if you are already a Muslim and you're simply looking to come and pray at your local mosque for the first time, then what I would say is beforehand, see if you can look online and find out when they're going to be praying. Because... The beginning time of the prayer is not always going to be the time that they pray in congregation at the mosque. So if you're just going there to pray for the first time, it might be more useful for you to actually turn up at the time when they're going to be praying in congregation. But as I said, when I enter the masjid, I will be looking at which direction are we going to be praying in. Now, there's a number of things that will indicate this for you. So let's look at this example and look at what are some of the things that indicate the direction of the prayer. In my experience, it's very common that you will find some sort of pulpit or raised stage where the person who is giving the Friday sermon uh, before the Friday prayer uh, actually stands so that they can address the people and that's normally going to be the front of the mosque and because you're going to be praying behind this person that's generally the easiest way to find the direction sometimes on the roof there will also be arrows which indicate the direction to pray and sometimes the carpet isn't plain and it's got some sort of design that would help you understand the direction for prayer now if you don't find a pulpit you don't find an arrow you also might find that there's just a single prayer mat at the front of the area and that will generally be where the person who is leading the prayer will lead the prayer from. Very simply the way it works is there'll be one person who leads the prayer and all of the other people will line up in rows behind that person and they will follow that person's lead when doing the prayer. So you will also generally find some sort of lines on the carpet which will indicate the rows in which you can line up on. Some other things that you might find in the main prayer hall, you might find a bookcase that has some books on it. You might see something on the wall which will indicate the times for the prayer for that month and for that day. And as you can see in this masjid, as well as there being a separate building for the sisters, if you go in through the doors and you go to the left, there's actually a curtained area where the sisters can go behind and close the curtains so that they can have their own private area to pray in. Now, you may also need to make ablution. So you'll also find that most of the masjids have some sort of facility for you to use the restroom and for you to make ablution. In this masjid, they're actually separated areas. And you can see that there's a sign on the wall which will indicate where that place is and I've also found that there will generally be some sort of sign to indicate where you need to go if you need to make ablution or use the restroom. So as you can see in this masjid they actually have an office as well and they also have some other rooms in the building that they may just generally use for teaching or lectures or gatherings 
or anything like that. So I don't need to show you what the toilet looks like, but generally the toilet areas are very clean. So what I found is quite common is that when you go into the toilet area, you'll also find that there's some slippers on the floor that you can wear, and these would just avoid bringing any wetness or any impurity into the rest of the masjid, if that was mistakenly somehow to happen. And then this section here is the place where you can actually just go and make your ablution, should you need to do that. So now that you've had a tour of this particular masjid, I hope that that helps you understand that this is not really as daunting as you might think. It's a very simple place of worship where you can go and gather for the five prayers of the day and pray together. So there's just a couple of other things that I thought that you might need to know about. If you go to the masjid and you arrive early and you want to sit down, if you know how to, you should pray two units of prayer before you go ahead and sit down in the masjid. If you don't know how to do this yet, then don't worry about that. So something else that you might not be aware about, um, when it is time for the people to pray, they will do a call to prayer. One is called the Adhan and one is called the Akama. The Adhan is done sometime before to call the people to prayer and the Akama is done right before the prayer is about to start. To help you understand the difference, when you hear the Adhan, it will generally be done in quite a slow manner and the akama is generally done in a bit more of a hurried manner. So when you hear the akama being called in a bit more of a hurried manner and you see people standing up and starting to walk towards the front of the mosque, that will give you an indication that the prayer is actually about to start now. So inshallah I've achieved the purpose of this video which is just to simply give you a bit of general information about the masjid and to give you some sort of idea as to what to expect when you're going there. I may need to make some more videos later on to give you some more information. One of those things that I need to break down is what to do when you arrive to the masjid and the prayer has already started what to do if you've missed some of the units of prayer already. But I found that this is actually quite a technical thing so I'm going to make a separate video on that later on. If you have any questions or you need someone to talk to about this particular topic, I've put my email in the description so you can email me or you can leave a comment and I will definitely try my best to reply to all of the comments that you guys leave. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.